Uh, some positive positives from the game. I thought we were really resilient. Uh, we were physically and mentally tough. We overcame adversity, and we kind of took it one play at a time. We never kind of – there was no panic. There was no flinching. You never saw any of that when we got down by a few points there in the second quarter. Um, to me, we've gotten back to our identity over the last couple of weeks, which is we find ways to win, which is really who we've been over the last seven years. I thought we played complementary football, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, the cornerbacks, uh, what they have been able to do has been, I think, really impressive with the lack of depth that we've had at that position. I thought the sideline energy has been much better the last three weeks, um, You know, kind of understanding that we got to create that on our own. Uh, obviously, I thought the punt return was a huge play in the game. Areas for growth, um, ball security in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. We've got to continue to emphasize that. we got to eliminate the pre-snap and post-snap penalties. Um, you're going to get some penalties during, during a play that are going to happen, aggressive penalties. But we got to get rid of the pre-snap and post-snap penalties. And then we got to take advantage of opportunities when they're there, uh, whether that is a sack, whether that is a tackle for loss, whether that is an interception, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, we got to take advantage of those when they come. And from an Illinois perspective, uh, uh, obviously, um, you know, I'm a, I've been a big fan of, of Lovey Smith, his, his entire career, what he's been able to do. You look at his resume. Uh, his resume uh, is impressive, uh, you know, for what he's done throughout his entire career. Um, also a little troubling um, that out of 130 Division I programs, uh, there's, there, I think there's only 14 African-American head coaches and three of them have been, have been let go this year. Um, I hate to see that uh, for Lovey, who I think is a good man and, and a very, very good football coach. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Rod Smith is going to be the interim coach. Who's also the offensive coordinator. And I think does a really good job, you know, on that side of the ball, especially when it comes to running the ball. Um, you know, uh, when you talk about guys that were impressive, impressed with their quarterback athlete who's a highly recruited kid, Isaiah Williams, uh, running back Chase Brown is really, really having a nice year, a uh, wide receiver, uh, number nine, Josh. Uh, Emma Toberly. I hope I said that right. I apologize if I didn't. O line, Kendrick Green, number 53, number 65, Doug Kramer, offensive lineman, and then her tight end, number 87. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, Jimmy Lindsey, uh, the defensive coordinator, been impressed with uh, D lineman number 99, Owen Carey, uh, excuse me, Owen Carney, and uh, the linebacker, Jake Hansen. I'm a big fan of his, very productive player. I think his dad was an All-American at BYU, uh, he, but he's he's been playing well for for a number of years. And then on special teams, uh, their punter I think does a tremendous job. Blake Hayes um, and Bob Ligashevsky is a guy I've known for a long time. He's a PA guy. I track all the PA guys, and Bob uh, Bob I've known for a long time and does a good job. He's got tremendous NFL as well as college experience. So open it up to questions. First question will be with Mike Gross, Lancaster Newspapers, and Mark Bryan, you're on deck. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Good, Mike. You? I'm fine, thanks. Um, this won't be the first time that you've coached against a team that just lost its head coach. Do you have any um, – what's your experience in this in terms of how the – how this how this team is likely to rally? About, what, what kind of emotion will they bring? What kind of a factor have you found that to be over the years? Yeah, I, I, th I think right it off. has an impact. Uh, I think there's some times where, um, you know, where, where, you know, a different voice sometimes, you know, can, can spur some energy. Um, you know, for us, we also have to be ready for everything. Um, we have to be ready for them going for it more on fourth down. We have to be ready for them to, you know, pressure more than maybe they've pressured on the defensive side of the ball, maybe more cover zero, um, you know, and then on special teams, you know, fake punts, onsides, kicks to open the game, uh, things like that. We have to, we have to be ready uh, for that type of game. Um, but, you know, again, you, you, you don't want to be in this situation. You know, I think it's, it's obviously challenging, um, you know, uh, on, on the young men in the program, it's, it's challenging on the universities as well. And obviously, uh, the head coaches. So, um, you know, I hate to see that, you know, anybody is in this situation and, 
you know, obviously Illinois and, and Lovey Smith. Mark Bryan, Lions 247 with Fight on State. Rich Garcelle, you're on deck. James, I know it's a crazy week for you. Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate you guys. Your, your, your sacks allowed numbers are way down the last few games. I wonder if you could tell us why you think that is. And in semi-related news, uh, can you give us, is there anything you could tell us about C.J. Thorpe's status? We haven't really seen him the last couple of weeks. Thank you. Yeah, so CJ has been a, been a medical, uh, been a medical, you know, decision. Um, you know, we hope we hope to have him back. Um, um, you know, but we'll see. Those those are medical decisions that 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 you know we're not involved in, uh, but obviously are aware of. Um, you know, in terms of uh, you know protecting the quarterback and sacks, I think it's a combination of thing. I think it's it's our ability to run the ball better. Uh, I think it's our our play action pass. I think it's us. Um, you know, using the RPO, I think it's us staying on schedule a little bit uh, better in terms of being productive on on first and second down, uh, creating more manageable third down situations. Uh, I think it's a combination of of, of all those things. So um, I think I think you know, Coach Troutwine has done a good job as well. I know he's got a very close relationship and has really earned the respect uh, of that room. He's got a similar story to a lot of those guys, or or he's got a story that a lot of those guys would like to have, uh, in terms of a you know blue collar, hard working guy that um, you know had a really good college career and then had an opportunity to to play in the NFL uh, for a number of years, kind of a self made man you know type of guy. And um, I think I think his story and his experience. Um, uh, and in some ways, his age, uh, you know, um, he relates really well with his guys and, and they identify with him. So I think it's a combination of, of all those things, how we're calling the game, um, you know, the style that we're playing with the last couple of weeks. Uh, and then also their technique and fundamentals they are getting more comfortable and more confident with. Rich Scarcella, Red Eagle, Audrey Snyder, you're on deck. Hi, James. Thanks for your time. You too. Um, considering how long you – and your players have been away from your families. How do you balance those emotions with preparing for this game and maybe another one going forward? And if I could follow up, have have any players decided not to continue with the season? So, um, so yeah, it's 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 been a challenge. There's no doubt about it. I think last week, you know, was a challenge because you know the way the way we ended up doing it in the conference you know last week was essentially our last game and we were waiting to find out what the next game was and i just think that created some challenges you're in the locker room and there's there's not another game technically on the schedule um and and, and i think all the big 10 games were done by like eight o'clock you know so i i think it would have been helpful if if that meeting and those decisions were made saturday night um, you know, or Saturday evening type of deal. Um, I think that that would have been helpful. Would have helped the coaches get the game plans and the breakdowns going. It helped the players kind of manage and understand, and their parents make plans. Um, but um, but yeah, that's that that's been challenging. I think you know I, I addressed it Saturday night in the locker room, um, and then as soon as we kind of had a feeling, you know, Sunday morning, I know. You know, the the conference and the ADs were all together kind of working on that. As soon as we knew and found out, uh, you know, we were we were rolling full steam ahead. We kind of knew a little bit before it was announced publicly, obviously. So we were able to start to break down and get the film downloaded for the players to watch. I didn't tell them um, until it was announced because I didn't want them anything, anybody put anything on social media. But I think they also saw the only game that was downloaded, you know, on the system was, was Illinois. But the other thing we didn't know is, was it going to be home or away? So trying to kind of figure out all those things and the planning that, that needed to take place uh, for both sides, uh, you know, was, was difficult and challenging. And then, and then what we're going to do, um, you know, is, is Saturday night after the game, because as you know, you know we take a 1-0 and mentality. Uh, Saturday night after the game, you know, we'll, we'll have another discussion. Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Corey Geiger, you're on Hey, James. Thanks for the time. You too. Um, we'll hear from Andy Frank tomorrow. And I'm, I'm just wondering, since 2021 was so unusual for so many reasons, 
Titans um, 21, 21 cycle. Are there any examples that come to mind of what your recruiting department has done maybe behind the scenes that we haven't seen or that we wouldn't be aware of? Yeah. Uh, good question, Audrey. It's just, it's, it's, it's just so different. I think, you know, and you guys have heard me say this before, um, you know, uh, you, you look at the number of division one players in the state of Pennsylvania over the last 30 years, um, it's changed. You look at the population in the state of Pennsylvania, it, it's gone down. You look at the number of high school graduates in the state of Pennsylvania, it has gone down. Still really good football is played here. Still really good players are played here. But this is also a place where you got to come and see it. You got to have a plan to come and see it, whether it's a game or whether it's a spring game or whether it's a junior day during spring practice. And it, it's a special place, but you got to come see it. Well, not being able to do all, all those things, not having spring ball, not having summer. Uh, we've just had to be really creative um, in terms of how do we show the campus? How do we give a campus tour? Uh, how do we give a facilities tour? Um, how do we build connections and bonds with people? Um, because, yeah, half of the class probably has been here, but half of the class hasn't, you know, um, you know, it makes me think all the way back to, to Torrance Brown um, and Christian Campbell that committed to Penn State uh, the night before signing day without ever seeing the place and didn't come on their official visit until the spring game after they signed. Um, you know, it's, it's been very unusual. So the recruiting staff has, has had to be very creative um, and, um, and finding different ways to connect uh, and, and attract the best student athletes that we possibly could be. And a lot of it was Zoom. A lot of it was FaceTime. A lot of it was videos that we tried to do to be creative and be different. Uh, mail that you're sending, um, you know, group Zoom calls, individual group, uh, in, individual uh, FaceTime calls, um, just as, as many different things that, that we could find, you know, showing them, you know, again, in the campus tour, showing them the facilities, setting up a meeting with the strength coaches because they typically would be able to meet with our strength staff or setting up a meeting with our academic staff because they usually would sit down with our academic staff, having to do all those through Zoom. Um, you know, so it just, you know, we tried to recreate everything that we normally would do, but you're doing it virtually. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's not, you know, that's not easy to do. Corey Geiger, Nittany Sports Now. Ben Jones, you're on deck. Hi, James. Uh, another recruiting question. Uh, certainly an, a, a massive amount of time and manpower is spent into recruiting high school kids. But with the one-time transfer rule expected to pass next month, how, how much do you think logistically things are going to have to change in college football with the, the amount of time you're spending recruiting the portal, the amount of manpower, hours, staff? How, how will all that change? Yeah, dramatically. And a lot of programs, very similar to the NFL, you know, just like you have, you know, they have their evaluation departments that eval, that eval uh, college prospects for the draft. They also have pro player personnel departments where they're evaluating the roster of other teams. And a lot of the programs across the country have done that, you know, very similar uh, to an NFL model where you have a completely separate recruiting department, uh, you know, studying uh, other people's rosters and being ready to, to take transfers. Um, I think, you know, you're going to see that you're going to see that on a significant level, um, you know, this year uh, across college football. I, I think about how much college football has changed, you know, over the last five years, maybe over the last 10 years with all the rules, with all the things being discussed, um, it's very different, you know, it's very different and you have to be willing to change with those times. Um, and I know sometimes people, you know, get frustrated with it or, or, you know, don't understand it or, or want things to go back the way they, they were, you know, that's not happening. So you got to embrace it and, and you got to move forward. But I think your point is a good one. I think over the last number of years, a lot of programs have saved scholarships for transfers even before the new rule. And now, um, you know, you're, you're going to see that even more. And then the hard part is, um, you know, sometimes you don't know when you're trying to project your numbers. Uh, it's hard to do that. 
you know, unless, unless people are being transparent and, and upfront and, and honest with you. Ben Jones, statecollege.com. Greg Pickle, you're on deck. Hey James, how's it going? Good, Ben. You? Uh, older and wiser. Um, it, it, How was your birthday? What'd you do? Uh, some things are better left off Zoom, but um, no, it was fine. Um, I look forward to hearing it at some point. Yeah, it's supposed to snow a lot tomorrow night and evening. 2020, around. baby. 2020. Uh, I mean, are you guys just going to sleep over? I mean, how are you, how are you kind of navigating the, the transportation aspect of your Thursday morning and Wednesday night? My my wife's got a, got a great story that she always tells on this. When we were at the University of Maryland, I think I was the offensive coordinator. It snowed. It was like, I don't know if you guys remember that year. It's like a 30 inches, like something crazy. And I woke up and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll see you. She's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to work. And, and I think I had some type of like SUV. So I was like, I'm going, you know, and I couldn't get out of the driveway. And then I spent like the next six hours, like shoveling the driveway. And, and my wife was just like laughing at me the whole time. So you know, fortunately here, we all live fairly close. Um, most of our guys live on campus. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll do like we do everything else. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll adjust, um, and, uh, and, and, and be ready to get the work done that needs to be done. Um, but, but it, it'll be interesting. It's, it's, it's just another thing in 2020, um, that we're going to have to that we're going to have to handle that we're going to have to have a plan for. We've already started talking about it, not only um, as a, as a staff but also also with the administration. Um, but it should be interesting. You know, it it may start out as a football practice and it may end as a snowball fight. Uh, and as long as I don't get hit in the face, I, I'm good. Greg Picklepen live. Thomas Frank Carr, you're on deck. Good afternoon, Coach. You talked about it some last week, but how were you? guys balance the signing day celebration tomorrow and the fact that you're game planning, practicing, having your normal staff meetings, position meetings and all of that. How's that going to look? And shoveling snow. Um, I, I think, I, I think the way we have it planned out is, you know, for about a three hour block of time, I'm going to shift my time from typically a Wednesday offense, defense and special teams. And I'm going to be handling the recruits. Uh, with the recruiting staff, the coaches will do their normal game planning, but we have, we have the, the call scheduled at a certain time. So recruit X, which I can't say his name. I almost said one of their guys' names right now and got myself in trouble. But so recruit X is going to call in at seven o'clock at seven o'clock that that position coach and that area coach will step out of their meetings and be with me to greet them with the recruiting staff uh, on zoom. Uh, and then they'll go back to work. And then at 7.15, the next guy's calling in, and that guy will step out of the meeting and be there with me to to celebrate that young man and their families and try to make it as special as we possibly can. But like to your point, we got meetings that day, we got practice that day, and we got a game on Saturday. So we got we to gotta find a way to balance it. So for the most part, me and the recruiting staff will handle that. And the, and the position coaches and the area coaches – will pop in and out throughout the day, but, but it helps that it's scheduled ahead of time. There's also a bunch of stuff that we have pre-recorded uh, ahead of time, which, which that will help um, uh, to make these, to make these young men and their families feel special. Uh, this is a, this is a day to celebrate their futures and the decisions that they have made. And, and we want to make sure we do, we do everything we can, especially when they've lost out on so much already, like official visits and, and things like that. T. Frank Carr, ESPN Radio 1450, and Parth, you're on deck. Hey, James, happy holidays. You as well. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit, if you don't mind, about your relationship in-game with Kirk Sharaka and Sean Clifford. You're uh, well-known for being an aggressive coach and wanting to create explosive plays. Are there times that you find yourself pushing the offense, or are there times that you feel like you need to encourage them to be more aggressive, either in play calling or in shot selection for your quarterback? Yeah. And, and, and really I've kind of always done that. And that may be on defense on a third and long where we're having a discussion on the headset, whether we should blitz or play coverage and make them earn it. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's where I'll interject and, and make a point, especially, especially as when I look at it through a different lens as a, as a guy with an offensive background, Hey, we're in plus territory and this is a third and, and short 
remember, this is probably two down territory for them. So it's not just stop third down. Um, this could be a shot situation because they're going to go for it on, on, on fourth down. It's the same way on offense. Um, and I've done that with every, every coordinator we've had, Hey, you know, we need to push the ball down the field a little bit more. Um, you know, we, we've gotten conservative or, or, Hey, you know, you're up in the booth. You can't tell we're at Rutgers right now. The weather is significant. Like the weather is significant and we need to go into a four minute offense mode to try to run the clock out to get the win back in the next quarter, you know, um, things like that. It's, uh, I actually had Sean in my office and will in my office. Uh, I'm not sure if it was yesterday or today, they all seem to run together, but it's watching the, the Northwestern Indiana game and they had weather as well. And it was a third down situation in plus territory and uh, the uh, was watching the TV copy with him, and I brought him in to show him. And they're talking about the announcers talking about uh, it was a third and five, and how they called a pass. I think they called a mesh concept, and they were talking about how you know they didn't agree with the call. They should have ran the ball right there. And I, I said, well, you know, in, in my opinion, I watched it with Sean and Will, and asked them what their thoughts were. You know, the mesh concept was was a fine call, um, and if it's open, you hit it and you keep the sticks moving, and everything's great. But you know, what, what, what also could have happened right there is there was an opportunity for the quarterback once he went through his first two progressions to hitch up on his third progression when it's not there. Um, if you can go run for the first down, uh, obviously do that. If you, if you can't run for the first down, but you can still get two or three yards, now you've just put me in a situation and Kirk in a situation where we're more comfortable going for it on fourth down or you've added to the field goal. So I kind of wanted to show them that whole scenario. They ended up kicking a 52 yard field goal. I think it came up just short, you know, but that's kind of what we were talking about. And what I'll usually do with Sean over the last couple of years and now will is, is I'll try to like, you know, give Sean uh, a signal, you know, that you got two right here. Cause I'm usually telling Kirk on the headset, Hey, you got two downs right here to get the first. Because if he knows that before his third down call, then that allows him to to maybe call it a little bit differently. But it's a fine line because you don't also want to be running it on every third and five or third and six. So it's a fine line. You don't want to become too conservative knowing that you have fourth down. You know, but I also think it's powerful if the quarterback knows that if the throw's there, take it. But if it's not, any yards that you can get a puts us in a more manageable fourth down situation to go for it. And as soon as you cross midfield, you should be thinking that way. I hope that answered your question. Parthi Padre, Center Daily Times, New Bias here on deck. Hey, Coach. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. You too, Far. You know, as, as good as John Dotson's been on the field, you know, everyone I talked to, you included, has said that, you know, he's so quiet off of it, right? Um, kind of as the season's wind down, winding down, rather, um, how have you seen him kind of – break out of that shell, you know, with having to be that leader for that room, you know, uh, kind of guiding Parker and Keandre. Yeah. He's, he's just been more vocal this year in general. Um, and I just see his confidence growing. It was really cool to see how the sideline reacted to him on the, the punt return. You know, they were throwing him around and carrying him around on their shoulders. Um, you know, he's just one of those guys that I think everybody really likes and, and respects. Uh, it was also really cool being an in-state player and, and staying home you know, getting, getting a text from his high school coach, getting a text from his, you know, athletic director, getting a text from his former trainer, you know, about how, how well Jahan's doing and how happy they are for him, you know, from the same kind of area that Saquon's from, you know, they're, they're from a very you know similar area, not far from each other. And, um, you know, it's, I, I think that's special. You know, I think that that's special when, you know, you got people in this community that, you know, not only are watching him on Saturdays and supporting him, but know him, you know, that, that know him, um, you know, he was a high level, uh, high school basketball player, you know, when we recruited him as well, he's just one of those guys that it always just came so natural to him. And as he's gotten bigger and stronger, he's gotten more explosive. And the good thing is I think there's still a lot left, you know, in the tank for him. I think there's a lot more development. Um, he's a guy that typically struggles to keep weight on during the season we got to figure out a better way of doing that because this summer 
like for the first time I ever walking in the weight room and I was like, wow, I went up to him and like, he had like bumps on his arms and his shoulders, like muscles. And, um, you know, he looked really good, you know, and, um, you know, that, that, that hasn't always come easy to him cause he was a fairly slight guy coming in. So I just think he continues to get more confident, continues to get stronger, more explosive. And he's got a really bright future. He's kind of, he's kind of, you know, put, put himself on the map now. New bias will learn fit through post gazette. Frank Bodani, you're on deck. Coach, um, on the remainder of the receivers, what is Parker Washington, particularly coming on campus, 18 year old freshman, seeing him develop, and particularly that play where he, he scored the 31 touch, 31 yard touchdown, shakes a couple of guys. What are you just seeing with him over the really the time he's been here? Yeah, well, first of all, he was, you know, raised really well. He's got a really strong mom and dad and, and sister that were all very involved in the process. Um, played really good high school football. Uh, and then when he got here, he didn't really look like a wide out. You know, he looked like a running back. You look at his lower half. I know you guys haven't had a chance to see these guys the same way you normally would, but he looks like a running back and his lower half is, is really built that way. Um, you know, and then he's got, he's got, you know, what I would characterize as, is not good ball skills. I think he has elite ball skills. Um, and he's a smart guy, you know, so he's taken a very mature approach to it. Um, you know, and, and we're excited about, about his future. We're excited about Keandre's future. There's a bunch of those guys that, that we're, we're excited about. Uh, but to see those two freshmen, you know, come in and play and, and play and they're, they're very close, which I think helps. Those guys are always out there early on the jugs machine and staying late. Um, and, and they've picked things up. So, you know, uh, I, I think he's had a great freshman year and, uh, I think, I think it's something that, that we can really build on, but I think it's his ball skills. I think it's his intelligence. I think it's his maturity. Um, I think it's his maturity and his approach. Um, you know, and, and, and when given opportunities, he's, he's taken advantage of them. Frank Podani, York Daily Record. Neil Riddell, you're on deck. Hey, good afternoon, James. Thank you. You um, as well. So going through this season, very unusual, of course, trying 0-5 start. What do you think you have learned about yourself as a head coach that might help you going forward? And um, how would you evaluate how you've done? Now, I have probably learned more about my th- myself this year, personally and professionally, than at any point in my 48 years, uh, on, on, on this planet, you know, I've, I've had professional challenges before in my career. I've had personal challenges, uh, before in, in my life, uh, never really both at the same time. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I really believe in the core values, you know, that you guys know that we talk about all the time, positive attitude, great work ethic, compete in everything you do, and you must be willing to sacrifice. But those things were kind of like, in, in a positive way, they were an anchor for me this year. I could lean on those things, um, you know, when, when I needed to, the sacrifices that everybody was making, the work ethic to drive through and, and, and push through, um, you know, the situation we were in, uh, always having fun competing in, in whatever you do, um, you know, and then the positive attitude, you know, um, you know, during, during times that that was, that was hard to do. And as the head coach, you know, giving the team the face that they need to see, um, you know, it's been a lot, you know, it's, it's, it's being strong for my wife and, and daughters. It's, it's being strong for the team and the staff and the players, um, it's knowing who I could talk to, you know, it's, it's, you know, who can I have the conversations that, you know, when I need to have, you know, hard conversations, um, you know, I've learned a lot. I, I do know this, you know, for me this week, you know, and the rest of the season, um, you know, my, my goal is to continue to keep everybody healthy, which is what, um, I'm very proud of. We've done a really good job of that again, knock on wood. Um, it's not over as soon as you drop your guard, um, you get in trouble, but, but we've done a really good job of that. Again, I know, um, you know, that for the most part, all all that anybody is, is focused on is the, is the wins, you know, outside, outside of our circle. 
Uh, but I'm very, I'm very proud of that. And we have to continue to finish this thing the right way because my conversations with the parents before the season, uh, that, that was something that, that, that I told them that we were going to do. Uh, so I'm very, very proud of that. Uh, number two, we got to find a way to get a win this week. Uh, we got to continue to, to keep this momentum that we got going. Uh, and then the third one for me is I, I got to find a way to get my family back together. You know, um, that's, I, I always knew, you know, that I was a family guy. I've, I've always known that. And, um, and I've never taken that for granted, but I would challenge everybody on this call, all the media members and anybody that may be listening. Um, don't, don't ever take that for granted. And I didn't, but this, this has been, this has been, um, enlightening for me. So if you get an opportunity to hug your wife, hug your kids, um, brother, sister, family member, whatever it may be, do not take that, that for granted. Um, that's, that's, that's something I've always known, but this is, this has magnified it for me. So I've learned so much. And, um, at the end of the day, I, I got to find a way to get my, my family back together as, as soon as possible. Time for two more, Neil Rudell, and then, uh, Tyler Donahue. Yeah. Hi, James. Um, and Neil. Wondering, uh, you know, you alluded to the communication with the Big Ten. Um, are you satisfied or frustrated or somewhere in between with the level of communication uh, from the coaches with the Big Ten on various administrative type of announcements? Um, Sunday and even rolling back to, um, you know, the announcement of the schedule and some of those things that unfolded. Well, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, this isn't the answer you, you want, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to keep my focus on, um, you know, on Penn state and the things that, that I can impact and the things that, that I can control, which is, you know, our game this week against Illinois and keeping everybody safe and, and healthy. But I, but I do think you can look at, you know, you can really look at across college football. And I think you can also include the NFL and look at the models uh, and and study the models, uh, not necessarily to be critical, but to to learn from, and study all the different models, and say, okay, what models worked the best? And and I'm not talking about for for individual schools. I'm talking about for entire conferences. Um, what 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 was what was the model that kept everybody as healthy as possible? What was the model that allowed as many games to be played as possible? What model allowed there to be, um, you know, is, 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 is much competitive, good football on the field being played. And I don't think you can look at it through one lens. You got to look at all of it. You know, you got to look at all of it. You got to look at the flexibility, you know, that I think a a lot of people talked about, you know, being important. I think, I think you got to look at it all. And I think, Again, that's that's all of us. You know, um, we're going to do the same thing here. You know, wh- what are the things that we did really well? What are the things that we can learn from? What are the things that 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 we can grow from? And I think you always need to do that. You need to have an after action plan where after a training camp, after a game, after a pandemic, after whatever, you better you better take a moment and sit down and say, OK, what did we do good? What didn't we do good? What can we improve on? What can we learn from? And again, that's not being critical. That's 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 growing and learning as 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 individuals and as organizations. Last question to Tyler Donahue, lines two four seven. Hi, James. Uh, finish you off back with uh, the signing day uh, topic because these a lot of these recruits are bringing in are going to be I don't know eighteen months removed from actually getting on the field. But- by the time they get to a field with practice with you guys, how are you going to account for that? Do you have a plan in place for the fact that these guys either had abbreviated senior seasons, no senior seasons, and even before a season may not have had the practice time that you normally would have accrued for an 18, 19 year old. Yeah. There are all the things that we're working on right now. Actually, I just got a phone call about an hour ago uh, with Scott Sidwell and Kevin Threlkill, where we were talking about that. Okay. Um, you know, what is the plan moving forward with not only our current team, 
but also the incoming players. Um, you know, uh, what, what's going to factor to a lot of places is our, our schools back in session, you know, are, are you in class? Are you on campus? Um, you know, uh, are you going to have spring ball? Uh, are you going to have spring recruiting? Uh, how are we going to schedule the one indoor facility that we have on campus with, with 31 sports, um, all playing pretty much at the same time. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, that, that have to be organized, that have to be scheduled, that have to be communicated. And it's not taking what we did in 2019 or 18 or 17 or 16. It's, it's literally, um, you know, again, kind of what we just talked about learning from how we handled this, this past year. And, and, uh, cause as we all know, it's not just like we're going to snap our fingers and this is, this is going to change overnight. Um, you know, there's not going to be that type of you know, miracle or, or magic wand. Um, you know, so we have to plan for it, but the challenge is planning is when, when you don't really know what this semester is actually going to look like on, on all these campuses and how the NCAA is going to handle it and how the big 10 is going to handle it. So you're going to have to have multiple models, uh, built, uh, multiple models built up. So that, that's literally what we're, we're working on now.